it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Wednesday, July 17th. Okay, so we have the moon in Sagittarius energy here all day. We just shifted into this Sag energy late last evening. And of course, the Sag energy is much more optimistic, much more confident, much more hopeful and wishful than we have had in a very long time. Of course, we just came out of the moon being in Scorpio energy. We definitely did some shadow work over the last couple of days. We empowered ourselves. There were new insights, new perspectives, new understandings that have emerged and the Sag energy now lets us stand in a brand new truth, in a brand new perspective, a brand new understanding of the world around us, of the circumstances that we've just gone through, that we're currently going through. And it gives us a bigger vision on what it is now that we need to build, what we have to create, what we actually need to pursue. So we have another moon day on our hands here today. We just had one yesterday. This one is going to be a little bit different because, of course, Wednesdays are ruled over by Mercury. Mercury rules over the mental plane, rules over information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves. Mercury focuses in on the smaller details, while the Sag energy focuses in on the big picture. So we're definitely going to have some pop-offs here, some aha moments, some light bulb moments, if you will. But it's a relatively quiet day in the cosmos. There's only five different aspects popping off. All five involve the moon. And just to give you a cautionary note, this is essentially the calm before the storm. We are in for a very chaotic, very turbulent, very intense weekend coming at us, of course, for a lot of reasons, but mostly because we are nearing the end of Mars's transit in this Taurus energy. We will be shifting into Gemini energy here on the 20th. Then on the 21st, we have the second full moon in Capricorn that is going to bring a completion point, a closure, if you will, to a lot of the, let's call it chaos, a lot of the confusion situations that began when we entered into cancer season under that solstice. And then we're wrapping up cancer season. We're diving into Leo season. And so again, back to back energy shifts. It's always a little bit of a bumpy ride. And because cancer season is hella emotional, we're definitely going to be feeling all of those feels and really kind of pushing the boundaries, if you will, of our emotions, of our understanding, of our perspective, of what it is now that we need to do, need to pursue. There's going to be a lot of revelations over the next couple of days, but of course, we're not there yet. As I previously mentioned, five different aspects popping off here today. Five of them are going to involve the moon. The moon in Sag energy going to try beautiful interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, who's in the heart and soul of the Zodiac already in Leo energy. So we get some fire on fire action here. We love fire energy. First of all, fire energy helps us to burn through the cords, the attachments to the old, the attachments to the past. Then we get a spark, a fire, a flame, new excitement, new inspiration, if you will, to put us on a totally different path to put us in a different mood different attitude that fire energy puts a pep back in our step and kind of builds and cultivates the energy needed for us to make a major change major transformation the moon interacting with venus in this way definitely helping us to grow helping us to evolve helping us to build towards this major change of heart this pivot point that many of us are already feeling there is going to be a certain realization where relationship dynamics many of those relationship dynamics have been popping off in a negative sense because again karmically speaking there is a closure to a certain karmic contract in order for new karmic contracts to actually be initiated which means that relationships are falling apart if they're not divinely scripted if they're not meant to be equally we have this meet queue if you will there are new people soul fan members coming in to our lives around this particular juncture and we're starting to realize what it is that we want what we need what we desire what we feel inspired and excited to pursue we want to put ourselves out there in a way that we haven't done in a very long time and we're a little bit more bold and brave and courageous with our emotions with our affections so this is going to be an aha moment an epiphany within ourselves of what it is that we actually want for ourselves what would make us happy where it is that we're 
operating from our most authentic self, especially when it comes to actually expressing our wants, our needs, our desires to the people around us. So in, you know, the fashion that we've been exploring, just as when we're feeling good, just when we receive insights, just we're, when we're on a different level, a different mood, a different attitude, that dark force energy kind of comes creeping back. And the moon in Sag energy is going to make a very awkward interaction with Chiron, that wounded healer in Aries energy. So now it's kind of like we just had a revelation we are feeling called to pursue something new. We're having light bulb moments on what we want, what we need, what we desire, especially where relationship dynamics are concerned. And now we start falling apart, second guessing ourselves. Why? Because we realize that having these revelations, having these insights puts us in a situation where now we actually have to kind of like shit or get off the pot, so to speak. You actually have to make a move, take action to either cut people off or enforce boundaries in order to let people know where it is that they need to stand in your life and where it is that you need them to meet you halfway or to compromise. When you realize what it is that you have to do, suddenly we're afraid to do it. So we take a step back. Now we're second guessing ourselves. Now we're kind of beating ourselves up. Now we're kind of wondering if we're asking too much of the people of the world around us. Now we're kind of wondering if we do have what it takes in order for us to do what we need to do in order to break free from certain relationship dynamics or energy exchanges or circumstances or situations. And it becomes a little bit overwhelming. We sit in that energy until the moon trines the north node in Aries energy. So again, fire on fire action. We love this because the Sag energy has us thinking about the future. It is very visionary. We're trying to conjure up a new goal, new vision, new dream. We're pushing the boundaries of what we believe is actually possible. We do have a tendency to bite off more than we can chew in this Sag energy. Um, but it's not a bad thing to move into la la land and to try and kind of capture a new goal, new vision, a dream for us to actually be working towards that North node being in that Aries energy is trying to get us on the right path, which does require us to kind of go on a solo quest, go on a little bit of a solo adventure in order for us to get to know ourselves. Once again, we have to be building ourselves up. So this trying again is a beautiful interaction in order for us to see the possibilities the options, the opportunities that currently are presenting themselves for us to move on, for us to grow, for us to evolve. And at the same time, we are still working on trying to create the very specific details that's needed in order for us to start manifesting the goal, the vision, the dream that we're now excited to pursue. Again, in typical fashion, we're feeling good about it. We're seeing the possibilities. We're seeing the opportunities for growth. And this is when the moon is going to make an awkward interaction with the sun. So again, that negative programming coming back, the fears, the doubts, the insecurities coming back, the vulnerabilities definitely being illuminated and highlighted at this point. Considering the fact that the sun is shining a bright light in this cancer energy, the new foundation that we need to build in our lives to feel safe, to feel secure, to feel happy, to feel pleasure, to feel joy again, to actually implement the boundaries that are needed in our relationship dynamics so we don't continue to pour too much of ourselves into other people and not leave enough of ourselves for ourselves to build ourselves up, to feel strong, to feel like we are doing what we need to do for thyself. And so the moon being our emotions and the sun being our life force energy, we're starting to see now where it is that futuristic visions, hopes, dreams require us to really take a good look at our present moment, at what is working, at is not working, at what we could do differently, where we can improve, basically where we have to pull our energy away from pouring into other people, pull it back within ourselves in order for us to stabilize, to figure out what it is that we need to build, what we need to bring to life, what we need to create from here. Now, the last aspect that we have here popping today is not going to be a pleasant one. The moon in Sag is going to sit across from directly oppose Jupiter. Jupiter rules over the Sag energy. Jupiter is in Sag's opposite sign in Gemini energy. Sag and Gemini energy share the axis of what we know, Gemini energy, versus what we believe, Sag energy. You cannot believe in something that you know. Belief can only exist in the absence of knowing. So at this particular juncture, if you will, 
Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, wisdom, blessings. He's in Gemini energy, looking to expand our mental plane, looking to really push the boundaries of what we know. Yes, the Sag energy is very optimistic. It dreams a very big dream. But this particular interaction, because it's an opposition, it's almost as if we are trying to kind of commit to things that we shouldn't be committing to as of yet. It's almost like we're borrowing time, we're borrowing energy, we're borrowing hopes and wishes and dreams from the future with that hope that we're able to do what it is that we need to do in order to actually get there. This is not a time where we should be committing to anything. This is not a time where we should be, you know, really, I'm going to say aligning with a path, with a direction, with a project, especially where other people are involved, because we are going to feel overconfident. We're going to feel like we can make it work, even though we don't have the resources, we don't have the information, the details, the energy, we don't have anything here in the present moment that this particular commitment and obligation would actually require us to commit to. And so again, there's a little bit of an extra drama that comes with Jupiter. And because we are very hopeful that we could get our shit together, that we are going to find ourselves in a different situation, a different circumstance, that pushes us to commit, thinking that if we commit, that that is going to be, you know, the pressure or the driving force in order for us to get our shit together, when realistically speaking, it's going to add an extra layer of pressure that we just don't need right now. So this particular emotion is going to be over-exaggerated. It is going to put us in a situation where we feel the urgency to kind of, I'm going to say, again, attach to a particular want, need, and desire, a particular outcome, particular goal that at this particular moment is just a hope, is just a dream. We have no proof, no evidence, no inclination whatsoever that it's even possible. So we don't want to borrow time or energy from the future version of self. We don't want to commit our future self to something that technically speaking, isn't going to look so good, isn't going to look so favorable here in a couple of days.